Here's an update on our building adventures. We're finishing up the compressed earth brick, CEB, workshop edition, and getting ready to start building our CNC torch table there for making more CEB presses. The last that you've seen was the windows being installed in the workshop. Since then, we've built an inner utility room. First, we drove the tractor inside to carry the 1600 pound battery bank around. That went smoothly, though the tractor was almost hitting the ceiling because we did not dig out the floor yet. Now there's a water pressure tank in the new room, a shower space to be framed up, framed up, plus the stove system. That's a story in itself. We have a CEB masonry encased wood stove. It has a Babington burner on the back side. The Babington burner has a cooking surface. There's a hot water tank inside a CEB enclosure, so it can be heated either by the stove in winter or the Babington in the summer. There's a common chimney for both the stove and Babington. In any case, this is the only dual wood Babington cooking water heating masonry stove, stove that we know of on this planet. We plan on adding further heat exchangers so that we can run a steam engine for electricity generation when we're using the stove for winter heating. So that's about as close to the true masonry stove that we wanted. We did also do some plastering inside plus put in a glass door so we're still working on this. It's in progress. But we need to build ourselves some more housing for a budding village. We're looking at expanding the population to 30 by the year's end. So the most economical year-round solution turns out to be a hexacube, our solar cubicle. It's, a, it's modular, industrial, quick, and simple. It's just a six-sided standard set of framed panels, 8 by 8 feet in size, with 2 by 4 lumber and oriented strand board, OSB, faces. It's got R13 insulation inside, and it takes about a day to build with a team of four people. Even two strong people can move a panel by hand. The panels are light enough so that four people can move them into place quite easily, even the roof. For the roof, we did take off the OSB on one side to reduce the weight a little bit, as we had to lift that panel over our heads. We screwed the panels together with 2x4s and 3-inch drywall screws on each of the 12 edges. The whole structure can be taken apart into panels readily and moved or modified. We can make several cubicles and even stack them into a ziggurat configuration. These panels are structural, so this is a, a move above temporary housing into housing that lasts on the order of decades. The solar cubicle costs... well, the solar... First, the solar cubicle rests on cinder blocks and it's insulated on all six sides. The total cost is about $380 without the stove. We use a driveway sealer for paint, driveway sealer that is. We found out that it's the only type of coating that can be applied quite easily in near freezing or even freezing temperatures as opposed to paint or tar. The driveway sealer remains quite fluid in cold temperatures. Then we put in an army stove, lined that with CEBs so the walls don't catch on fire, and lined the wall with aluminum flashing. The Hexacube solar cubicle proved that we can build on-demand accommodations in about a day at about $6 per square foot. This is just standard construction which is fast to build, unlike natural building. We expect the solar cubicles to be the, the transitional housing as we build our solar village from compressed earth bricks and local lumber. Here's a comparison of the solar cubicle to the hexayurt. We call the solar cubicle a hexacube in reference and deference to Vinay of the hexayurt. Well, for our purposes, the hexayurt does not do a good job in winter. Nick was called in there with a stove when it was 20 below Fahrenheit. The hexayurt, as we built it from OSB, has no floor, no insulation, and is more or less a temporary structure. All in all, the advantages of the Hexacube are that you basically have a permanent, modular, stackable structure, twice as fast to build as the OSB Hexayurt, with minimal site preparation. The disadvantages, the disadvantages are that it has both 
well, it has about half the usable floor area for a similar cost if you include the insulation costs. It is not as easy to insulate a hexayurt because of its corners. If you use the cheapest solution, fiberglass, you'd essentially have to frame up the entire hexayurt, which becomes too expensive in time and materials. On top of this, the hexayurt has no floor, so we'd recommend the hexayurt for wind sheltered, dry, warm areas. In windy areas, the hexayurt would have to be tied down, which we did here with some stakes at the base. So, the hexayurt lives as a good summer structure for us. With that, tune in next time for further adventures at Factory Farm.